I'd like to welcome you all to our service. We're so glad you all could make it. We can still have some people filing in, but we'll go ahead and get started. So my name is Anita McKean. I'll be uh, kind of doing the worship leader part of the service. Uh, we have a guest minister today, Pastor Ken Reese. We'll be um, giving our guests sermon today. We also have another guest minister here, Jim Sturkey, but we're not going to make him talk to him. Just here for the hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> or for him. Okay. So, please rise for the opening song. Hey, welcome everybody. Thank you all for coming out on this amazingly beautiful Father's Day. It's, it's uh, yeah, give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard of Neil Sedaka? Yeah. yeah. That was kind of a silly question, huh? Well, he wrote uh, the melody and the... He wrote... We changed the lyrics to a song that he wrote. Let me put it that way. <clears throat> and we're going to have some fun with it today. I love the message in it. Um, because... That's, the message in this song is why we're all here. We can't do this life without God. Well, we can, but it's certainly not. It's harder. It's a much harder, huh? So how you guys, you know, how's your, how's your rhythm feeling today? You feeling like you got some rhythm? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dude. Keep it going. Nice. expression um, well it's, it's it's biblical before that before it was involved in the slave trade but um, this old blue song was 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 um, popularized I guess you'd call it uh, during the uh, 
Underground Railroad and Harriet Tubman and her all the trips she made to the north, um, getting black people, slaves, out of the south. Um, with Fourth of July coming up, uh, I picked this song out because I think it really uh, talks about freedom, and it's a song about seeking freedom. Um, ultimately, there's a lot of biblical references, Moses leading the Israelites to freedom. Um, it alludes to, like I said, Harriet Tubman, I made some notes, and of course I didn't follow them, I always go inside out on my notes, but I think you guys get the message, it's, a, it's just a great song. What's that? It says it ends on a hopeful note. Yeah, it ends on a hopeful note saying, oh yeah, must be the children's that are coming through, which is a metaphor for all of us, I think. We're all coming through. Raise you. 
Faithfulness, your shield, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. dash your foot against a stone and he will raise you up on eagle's wing bear you on the breath of dawn make you shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand Join me in our opening prayer. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, we have praise moments. And um, we take praise moments from the audience, and then we have some special praise moments also. So do I have Susie? Well, with a great happy heart, I want to announce that Liam is now an uncle. <laughs> Sydney had her baby on Flag Day, so yes. that will always have a special meeting. Everybody is doing fun. Penelope Taylor Bickham. <laughs> That's wonderful. What great news. Do we have any other praise moments? John. Well, um, I guess it's a praise moment that kind of tells me. So, some of you know and some of you don't, but last night uh, Suzanne went to a, over to Putsies to have dinner with her classmates, and when she came back, Chuck wasn't doing really well. And so he ended up eating at the ER last night at, uh, at uh, B Memorial. Um, and then this morning, uh, he went uh, about 7.30 this morning. They took him up to San Jose. And amazingly enough, they already had a team there. And he had uh, surgery. Oh, wow. And uh, he, they put a stent in. And so possibly come home tomorrow. So, oh, wow. I know. It's amazing. So anyway, so Suzanne uh, quickly put everything together. And I went over and picked it up this morning before she left. So anyway. She's so thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank I you, think John. that's that an amen one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's definitely a praise moment. So are there any other praise moments? Then I have one. Miss Rachel Sturkey, would you please step up here, please? And I'd like the women of grace who are here to join me. We're going to be presenting a scholarship. Oh, nice. So every year, Women of Grace presents the Kathy Jock Memorial Scholarship. Kathy Jock was a teacher who went to our church and died too young. And, but this scholarship is not just for Women of Grace. Everybody in our congregation, anybody who has donated to any of our projects, the Easter lilies, the poinsettias, um, the rummage sale in the past, you've donated to these scholarships. And we were able to present four this year three for ongoing students and one for a high school graduate. We presented uh, two a couple of weeks ago, one to Alex Osorio and one to George Roberts. And today we have Rachel Sturkey with us for number three presentation. And we are just so pleased. Rachel, where are you going to school? 
Cedar Valley. Cedar Valley University. University in Ohio. In Ohio. Oh. So she's home for the summer, and Jim's happy to have at least one of his daughters home for. <laughs> Jim's for this too. We all know Jim. So congratulations, Rachel. We are so happy for you. Since it's Father's Day, I think it's a great day to sing a song about a father. And uh, this song was written by Vince Gill, and it's about his dad. <clears throat> and I just love this song because it reminds me a lot of my dad. He taught me how to play the mandolin. We just had a lot of music around our house all the time. And um, it was rarely in tune. It was rarely in time. But we had a lot of fun with it, and my dad was just so much fun to play, play music with, and he got me going, and the thing, the, 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 you know who my dad's very favorite artist was of all time? Roger Miller. Randy Hanley. Aww. We used to spend a lot of time around campfires and around the cabin at Roy Seiko, on my house and everywhere, and um, if Randy was going to be singing, my dad was going to be Daddy play once again all the songs that he taught me when I was a kid. John Henry, an old chef, and faded love. I fall to pieces and all the wings of a dove. Just a few chords on the mandolin well that was all he knew but in the eyes of a child man his fingers flew and I practiced and I practiced till I got it right then I packed up everything and just moved out one night Cuts 
like a Randall Knight. I learned a few chords on the mandolin. Is the key to life? Yeah. The pain of losing him cuts like a Randall Knight. I learned a few chords on the mandolin. Is the key to life? Father's Day. So it's time for the children's message. So can I ask the children to come up, please? I have chairs, so you don't have to sit on the ground. Who are these blonde children? What, the four-wheelers are? it was time to go out into the world. And he tells them it's going to be a really scary world. He tells them they might get beat up, they might get hurt, they might um, meet strangers who would be dangerous. He tells them there's some pretty dangerous things out there. And still these disciples decided to go because they knew one thing was true. They knew their Father in Heaven would take care of them. So that has a little bit to do with Father's Day. Because because they trusted their father in heaven to take care of them, just like you guys trust your dad to take care of you. Do you realize how scary it is to be a father? Yeah. You guys do. <laughs> you will. When you were learning you're going to become a father, even with your second child, you're still worried that you're not going to do right. You want to do the best you can for your baby. And you're, you want to be the best daddy you can, but sometimes it's just really hard. So who do you think your father trusts to guide him so he'll be a good father? Who do you think? My mom. <laughs> Covenant 
You shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the, el summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The second reading is from Romans chapter five, verses one through eight. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast on our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly, Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good reason someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we, are, we still are sinners, Christ died for us. Please rise for the gospel. The Gospel today is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease. I've gotten to know Jim Sturkey's son, and he apparently, if I'm not mistaken, he may be the ranking English-speaking minister in our city. Because um, he was the minister of youth, I think, at King City Bible. And between the changes and all, Jim, you've been here forever, haven't you? I guess so. It seems like <laughs> I maybe I've maybe been a pastor a little bit longer than he has here in King City, but I've enjoyed getting to know Jim and uh, just I've admired his quiet, gentle ways. I know you've had Bill Risk come out. Uh, Bill is much more of a cattleman. And I'm kind of glad I'm not one of his cattle because uh, with my bad hip, I would be called Burger. <laughs> and I would not like that to feel it. He's a good man, and I bet you'll see him again soon. So I wanted to do a little bit today to kind of warm up to get towards the sermon. And I'm going to start with the children. So kids, if you're a kid, I want you to listen in on this. The first one's going to be a question. Then we're going to have some Name That Tune contest. So, there was a song, it was the first one to reach 10 billion views on YouTube. It was about something that swims in the ocean. And there are three <laughs> different ones of these named. I see your hand. What song am I talking about? Baby Shark. Baby Shark is right. Well done. Well done. Okay, so now we got some songs to listen to, and I'll see if this will work uh, with our... Uh, Let's see how this goes. It seemed like an idea at one time. <laughs> So here's kids and what, what it's going to be. What or who lives in a pineapple under the sea? I saw that hand again. Red shirt. Yes, sir. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. You're a man that knows his classical music. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, now this song was a song about... Um, Someone purple who I love you, you love me, we're one big happy family. Well, no, you're not a kid, you're a kid at heart. Okay, Ray, give me another one. What is it? The purple dinosaur. The purple dinosaur whose name is Barney. Barney, okay. And then the other one, and I, I'm not kidding, this worked earlier today. It's the one where sometimes you do it at the. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> 
Did you hear that? Okay, so another word. Okay, Red, what is it? Chicken dance. That chicken dance. All right. This kid, he is going to be a man of Klein classic, classical music. I do that to warm up the adults. Now it's the varsity time. So adults, I'm going to do some hymns. See if you can finish some of these. First line in the song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And do you know the words that follow that talk about when our song shall rise to thee? Okay, yes? Early in the morning. Yes. Early in the morning, that's right. Holy, 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 uh, Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Very good. Okay, now, I was using a Baptist hymn, and I thought, you're Lutheran. <laughs> so I, I'm going to give you, this is going to be maybe an easy one. From Martin Luther, who says, A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark, a bulwark never failing. Okay, not bad for Luther. You know, okay. <laughs> okay, so this one. Now this comes from a Baptist hymnal out of the 70s. And the song, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, what types of expressions are on the faces? No, it's happier than that. Actually, give you a hint in the song. Sweet, sweet spirit. There are sweet expressions on each face. That's 70s. You guys, that, that, we can go back to study that later. Okay. In the hymn, this is leaning on the what kind of arms? Everlasting arms. You got, okay. All right. All right. So this is just the, the name of a hymn. Trust and obey. All right, you guys are pretty good. I like it, I like it. So in the hymn, just a closer walk with thee, the composer admits to being weak and asks God to keep us from all wrongs. Yes, all wrong. Keep us from all wrongs. So I give the Lutheran Church and their children high marks today in the contest <laughs> of Name That Tune. So well done. Now... The reason I do that, and kids, I want you to know that, that it is actually, I believe, that God loves music. And that's one of the reasons why we love music, because we're created in God's image. And so we're naturally drawn to music. It expresses our feelings and emotions. It, uh, it can express truth in the hymn, hymns. That's often the, the value of a hymn that's conveyed. And so I think that God is very happy when we sing. And I think he's very pleased when his children sing to him. Uh, my guess is every generation creates its own music. And I have a feeling that Cain and Abel fought with Adam and Eve over music. I don't know what they fought about, except it was too loud, and you cannot understand the words. Right. I'm sure that that was part of the conversation, because that's been the part of every contrasting generation since then. Uh, the volume, the content, and what constitutes good music. And so one day as a young teenager, I was listening, I was watching television, and one of the shows was a music show. And I was sitting there while a lady by the name of Tina Turner was ripping Proud Mary. And in walks my dad. My dad decreed that you cannot even understand the words. And so I didn't say anything. I thought a lot. I didn't say anything. I was pretty smart about that. I wanted to say, you're going to go out to the garage and tune in the New York Metropolitan Opera. And they have to have someone come on and tell you what the fat lady's going to say. And then when it's over, what the fat man just said. And you say, you can't understand the words of my music. But the sense of self-preservation is strong in this one. And I did not say that to my father. Who was not, it was not our, our family was not a democracy. It was a dadocracy. And dad ruled hoovers. So wisely, I kept my mouth shut. Of course, music has been around. There have been top 20 countdowns in radio and television. Top 40 charts have been around for, for a long time. There was an extremely popular radio show hosted by Barrett Eugene Harrison, who had a master's degree in music from UCLA. But you may know him better as the name Dr. Demento. Some of you kind of, oh, are you some of you old enough to remember the Dr. Demento show? Okay, well, that, that goes right back. So anyway, uh, today we're going to look at a psalm, the eighth psalm, and it's, to me, one of the kind of the, the top hits in, in the psalms. It's one of those that's fun to go to, it's fun to worship with. In fact, it has given birth in the last 40 years to 18 songs that churches sing across 
our, our nation. So it's a song that has prompted the hearts of people to praise. Now, the title I used was, This Is My Father's World. On Father's Day, I realized that it can be a very, um, you may have a very diverse reaction to the word father. I had a good father. I make fun of him, but he was a he was a rock. He was our family's rock when he died. It really is kind of hard. The family kind of went through a lot of adjustments. So the word father to me is a good word. But I realize that for some people you may have an adjective that goes along with the word father. It may be an absentee father or perhaps even an abusive father. So it's very hard to say those words and connect them to God. So if that is a struggle you have, I'm just going to pray that you feel like God fills the, the emptiness, the hole, the, the wound that you may have experienced in that, in that relationship growing up. And then God is the one you turn to to meet those unmet, those unmet um, emotional needs that, that come about for us. So this morning, this afternoon, uh, Psalm 8 is a very simple the words are, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory in the heavens, and through the praise of children and infants, you've established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. And I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You've made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You've made them rulers over the works of their hands, of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky, the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. And so, loving God, we thank you for the creation that you've given us. You have given us, as Louis Armstrong sings, a wonderful world. You gave it to us. You entrusted it to us. You asked us to rule over it. You asked us to, 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 to be a steward of this great creation of yours. Father, we sometimes succeed and sometimes we fail. But thank you that we come, we can sing praises, we can read scripture and praise to you, we can laugh, we can be together and to be for just a little while a people, a royal priesthood, a body of believers. Thank you. And I pray this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so the book of Psalms is, of course, the hymns of the Hebrew people. Um, they sang it. Sometimes we get a little bit of a clue in the psalm. It tells us where they might have been singing it. Like some are called the, the songs of ascent. And you'd be singing those as you headed to the temple. You'd sing those. And there'd be some other ones that tell us when it was written. There's the wonderful Psalm 51 that is the, the confession of a man by the name of David after he messed up big time, broke about half of the commandments in one day, and then finally the prophet Nathan gets in his face and says, you're the man. And he just is crushed inside. He thought he'd gotten away with sin. And he wrote this beautiful confession. In fact, that's one of the ones I would mark if I were If you need something to confess at time of confession, Psalm 51. But Psalm 8 is much more of a song of, 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 of praise. You know, one we would sing together as a group of people. It's, it's sometimes called a nature psalm. Sometimes it's called a messianic psalm. But it begins with this incredible look and this remark, remarkable situation that God pays attention and focuses on us. And a universe as big as this one is, and a speck of a planet as small as this one is, as small and insignificant as we may feel in the world today, God knows you and I. He knows what we need. He knows what we're going through. In fact, even the promise in the Gospels is that there's not a sparrow that falls from the sky apart from God's knowledge. Psalm 8 is, a cogn is a, an, an awareness, a recognition that God knows who we are, that we're important to God. And so that's why it says, O oh Lord, our Lord. It's a it's a relationship where God is, God is ours and we are His. We were mutually together and our God 
means it's a personal and a possessive relationship. God possesses me. Not me possessing him, but he possesses me. The, the Hebrews conveyed this important theological truth of, of Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Now that may not seem like much today, but in its day where every nation, every tribe had their own God, that was an incredible theological truth to say that there's only one God. That was, that was deep stuff. And so that's what's expressed here, I think, in Psalm 8. They, that they conveyed that truth. And they said, they said, we set the name above the heavens and he's shown the greatness in his world. And one of these days, Philippians 2 says, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. Until that day, we're having practice. We're practicing confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. We're practicing acknowledging him and bending our knee. And I got to tell you folks, bending my knee is a lot harder now than it used to be. It's not because I don't want to. It's because when I go down, it may take all of you to get me back up again. But I know that God says that we are to lift Him up. He created us. We did. It wasn't. Was it Marx who said that that God is the opiate of the people? That people needed someone. They needed a God, so they created a God. No, God created me. And so I stand knowing that I'm a creature who became a child. And so I just, I just love this, this passage here. That our Lord, our, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. And through the praise of children and infants, you've established a stronghold. I don't think there's anything more important that our kids can do than to learn to praise God and give God glory and to honor Him and see Him in the place high and lifted up. Because I think when we begin to see Him high and lifted up, everything else in this world begins to take a, a more proper focus. It begins to fall into place better. Jesus quoted that verse when He was cleansing the temple. When Jesus was cleansing the temple, folks, it was, it was pretty demonstrative, I think we might say. Um, tables overturned, coins flying, animals going, whips flying, cracking. It was Indiana Jones time. It was... It was, it was, it was, a, and then he thought about children. And he quoted that children and infants give God praise. Children and infants probably naturally give God praise because they have that childlikeness in them. He did not need us, but he did create us. He prepared this wonderful word for us. And as the Westminster Catechism says, our stated purpose is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. So we've, been, we've, we've glorified God some today. But I hope you'll also do that on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday that we glorify God because He deserves it. So we first of all know He created us. Secondly, it makes the claim that He cares for us. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is mankind that you're mindful of them and human beings that you care for them. This won't be a bad sermon that lasts until dark, but if we were out here, I imagine you can see stars in the moon differently out here than you can in town. Mm -hmm. I got that one of those nice, I like having the LED light out on the, the sidewalk out in front of our house, but it means I can't see the stars very well. It takes a mighty big moon for me to see it when that's so bright. And so in this beautiful psalm, it says that God set those things in the sky so that you and I would know that He's there and you and I would, would know that He cares for us. I can't help but believe that there's nothing that might lift depression more than to think that God cares for me. Of all the things, all this thing in the world that God would care for me, the size of this world, this universe, and yet He cares for me. He cares for you. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that if stars appeared only once in a century, people would stay up all night gazing at them. But they come out almost every night. And we take them for granted. I don't know when it was the last time I went out and looked up at the stars. They're beautiful. They've guided us through the years as, as, as ships went across the ocean. They, they, they inspire us. When was the last time you gazed up at the stars and thought, the God that put the stars and named the stars knows me. 
who made me, he knows me. And so I think that gives us some encouragement. And whether you learned about light years in your high school science class or on the journeys of the USS Starship Enterprise, I don't know where you learned about light years. The magnificent creation is proof that a God that's amazing cares for us. His creation is not what we worship. It's to be banked as evidence that he cares. His creation is for the enjoyment and the employment of human beings. And the phrase to be mindful means to remember. God will never forget you, no matter what circumstance you may be going through. So remember that God created us, God cares for us. And then I believe it says that God crowns us. I mean, he, he may feel like there's not much of a crown on your head, I know that. Um, it says here, you've made them a little lower than the angels. You crown them with glory and honor. You've made them rulers over the works of your hands and put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea and all that swims the paths of the sea. If we are a little lower than the angels, they're stuck. And the, the old music was, we're number two with a bullet. We're going to go from being children. We're going to reign with the king of kings and lord of lords. They're going to stay serving angels the rest of eternity. And you and I get to move from being children here on this earth to his children in heaven. And we'll reign with him. I heard someone say that with Adam and Eve we lost our crown. Well, maybe so. But you know what? I'm going to get my crown back. Because one of these days I'll be with him. And I will be able to to be one of his children and will be so happy, so glad that I will be able to, uh, to be in heaven in eternity with him. And I think sometimes we may forget how humbling that is. The story about two pastors from 100 years ago, and they didn't always agree on a lot of theology. They disagreed at points. And, and so uh, uh, they would often have debates and things. And so one time, one time up, a uh, reporter went to one of them and said, well, what, what do you think about Pastor so-and-so? Do you expect to see him in heaven? And the pastor said, oh, no. I won't see him in heaven. He's going to be so much closer to the throne than I am. I won't even catch a glimpse of him. We're going to be in heaven. And we may not feel like we're as close as we want to be, but you know what? If I'm there, I can give honor to anyone else who is there with me. I don't have to be first. I don't have to be at the foot of the, the throne. I just want to be there in heaven. And so I would encourage you to consider the fact that, that God created us. He cares for us. He has crowned us. And so I'm going to invite you to close with me just a simple last verse. I'll say a few words and I want you to repeat it after me. Lord our Lord, Lord. how majestic is your name. How majestic is your name. In all of the earth. In all of the earth. Amen. And may God add his blessing to the truths that he teaches us each day. Forgiven, 
because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive when the Spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned.
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of us. Dear Father in Heaven, as we celebrate this Father's Day, which is devoted to thanking our fathers for their love, we look to you, our Father in Heaven, as the shining example of what a father can be. You love us unconditionally. You grant us your grace every moment. We thank you for the many blessings you have given us and ask you to continue to guide us so we may make the right decisions when we are facing self-doubt. Please help us to lead our lives in a kind and graceful way, showing love and understanding to all. Please be with those who are ill at this time. Comfort them and give them strength and healing. Please be with those we know and we care for as we pray for them at this time, either aloud or in our hearts. Please be with Holly Thompson and Rita Tabernetti as they await their uh, transplants. Please be with Chuck Krauss, help him to be strong. Clothing, and or little clothing, they certainly don't have their school supplies. So that's what we collect for. We collect for um, those children in our backpacks at social services until someone is in need of them and then they are given to them so that they can start at their new school with the supplies that they need to be successful in school. So we are, still, we are collecting for that, um, either with donations or with materials to put in backpacks. Do we have any other announcements? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So with everything happening with Suzanne this morning, she, um, I woke up to a text message saying, please call, because this is, I hope everybody realizes, King City um, Beautification Week, and I believe Karen Jernigan, that was her brainstorm, I don't know, 30 years ago, Karen, how many years? About 30, huh? All right, so all week long, there's all these activities, and Saturday, next Saturday, at um, King City in Bloom, which has morphed from that King City Beautification Week to an all your organization to make King City such a beautiful place for us to live, they are having a self-guided tour of six different yards. And I believe there's like two in Greenfield, one out towards the Rural Seiko where the Hamley, somewhere near the Hamleys, um, two in Pine Canyon area, one out on Cologne Road, but looking at the map, it's easier to get to from Highway 101 than it is Cologne Road that way. But anyway, Suzanne had the great idea of inviting anybody who would like to join us we are going to be meeting at Grace Lutheran at 9.30. We're going to have coffee and donuts. And then instead of everybody driving a different car and putting all that carbon into the atmosphere, we're going to carpool together and have a caravan. And we will go to each of the stops. And we end up at the garden house where there's entertainment and I think a little bit of refreshments. And Suzanne has 10 tickets. Five of them have been sold. So I have five more, or if you already have your ticket from the Garden House or from somebody in King City and Bloom but would like to join us for the tour, let us know because we want to make sure we have plenty of good refreshments to fuel you up to go. So see me after church, during dinner, I'll be over here. The one thing that we didn't know is a tradition of Grace Lutheran Church on Father's Day, I cannot find Dad's root beer. Sorry guys. It's just not in the local stores, but we've got root beer floats, some other desserts, I know. And so anyway, I have short easy dessert to folks. find, okay? So if you're interested in the garden tour, please, please, please let us know. Thanks. Okay. Anita, my brother Terry has an announcement on the religious state of our nation. Terry. My brother, I called him up to tell him about this. Oh, yeah. I called him up to tell him about this, and, and, and he knew it already. On Jeopardy the other day, this last week, they had a category that was re religions. 
Actually, it was fill in the blank, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was. Doesn't matter. <laughs> On the on the on the card on the board, they had our Father, who art in heaven, blank be thy name. Gee, Terry, how many of the contestants got it right? They didn't, nobody answered. Nobody nobody buzzed in for that. And I'm going. What? So we could all be on Jeopardy now. <laughs> yeah. I was feeling pretty darn smart after that. Did anybody else see that? Maybe, maybe hallowed was not in their vocabulary. Everybody knows it's Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, Howard be thy name. Yeah. This is digressing very quickly. Get us out of here, Anita. <laughs> I'm going to say the benediction, but I would like to ask that once we are through, once the last song has been sung, um, we need to set up tables for eating, so if you are uh, you're feeling handy, we would appreciate if you will clear the chairs and put tables up in this area. May the Lord bless and keep us. May he make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May he lift up his countenance upon us and grant us peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Um, please rise for our closing song. And, uh, yeah, you know, our services, they always, Sharon and I, they have a flow. We always try to open the service with a kind of an upbeat song and get everybody going. And then maybe the second songs might might be um, not quite as upbeat or up-tempo. And then it gets more contemplative as, as we go through the service and following the message. We always try to make it uh, thoughtful and contempl contemplative. And then to close out the service, we always like to make it upbeat again and bring everybody back up and on your feet and uh, clapping or dancing or whatever you want to do. Um, this is a song we, I guess, originally started doing in youth group, huh, Ryan? Mexicali. Okay. Here I am.
am, oh Lord, so send me, send me. Take this willing heart and use me. Just a closer walk with you. 